How's it going? That's such an interesting question. It's different than how are you. How are you is really a question about you as a person, but how's it going or how are things? Those are, those are questions that are about your world, your circumstances, and how you're interpreting and relating those circumstances. I find that so interesting. And the Bible talks about how we interpret our circumstances. And I want to help you today learn how to have the peace, how to have the power, how to have the uh, joy and the contentment in spite of the circumstances around you. Now, I talk about this a lot, but for the next few videos, I'm going to delve into some particular areas that I think can help you as an individual learn how to be content no matter what is going on around you. Hey, Pastor Avery here. I want to talk to you today about how you interpret your world. This is such an important question because it goes to your contentment, your happiness, and your joy as a person in Christ. It is so unfortunate that there are so many Christians who don't live in contentment because they're interpreting their world the wrong way. And so I want to help you over the next few videos learn how to interpret your world, your circumstances, so that you can feel the contentment that God has for you. So let's look in uh, Philippians chapter 4 uh, and see what Paul says about contentment. He says in verse 11, Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity in any and every circumstance I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. Wow, that is so powerful. Uh, I remember a long time ago when I was young, I was constantly unhappy. And the reason I was unhappy was because I was interpreting the world around me through the wrong means. I was, I was waiting for circumstances to get right. Uh, if the money wasn't right, if the job wasn't right, if relationships weren't right, if my health wasn't right or my ministry wasn't right, I would get unhappy, dissatisfied, and frustrated. And, and for years, I felt a, a constant up and down of happiness and then uh, stress or worry or sadness. And then I'd get happy again. And, and one day it just dawned on me, and I know it was the Holy Spirit. It, it dawned on me that I was sick and tired of being unhappy. I was sick and tired of living in such a way that the circumstances around me that I had no control over dictated whether I was content or not. And that's when this scripture became real to me. Look what Paul says. He says, I don't speak from want. In other words, I don't consider myself a person who is doing without no matter the condition that I'm in. That's big right there. Some of you today, you think of yourself as the person who's doing without because you, doesn't have, you don't have the latest iPhone or, or you don't have the, a, a nice car or you don't own your own home or you didn't get to go to college or whatever the reason is, you feel like you're the person who's in want. Paul said, don't think of me as the person in want. That's not who I am. I am filled. I am blessed. I'm content no matter what condition I am in. Watch what he says here. For I have learned... To be content. He had learned to be content no matter what the circumstances he was in. Listen, uh, I remember one day I just decided I was not going to be unhappy anymore. I was not going to let circumstances tell me whether to be content or feel joy anymore. I was going to decide that for myself. Now, it sounds like I flipped a switch and became happy, but that's not true. I had to learn to do that. I had to, over years, continually check myself and not allow the circumstances, especially circumstances that I can't control, I won't allow them to tell me how my world is. They don't get to interpret the world for me. Are you catching this today? 
You have to learn this. You have to work at it. Paul said, I have learned these things. I know how to get along, whether I have humble means or whether I'm filled and live in prosperity. I have learned the secret of being filled or going hungry, having abundance or suffering need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I think of all the people out there who are stuck You can't go any farther because you're waiting for circumstances to change. And and when they do, you feel like then you can move forward. Well, I want you to know right now, uh, you're not waiting on your circumstances. You're just waiting on yourself to decide to move forward. Are you catching what I'm saying today? Are you getting this in your spirit? God wants you to, right now, be prepared to move forward in Him in spite of your circumstances. Listen, I want you to know God is not in heaven right now going, wow, if things were better, you could do more. You could have more. You could be more. He's never saying circumstances are holding you back. So what is holding you back? It's how you interpret your world. It's how you answer that question, what's going on? How are things? And I want to talk to you about one wrong way today that you may be interpreting your world and how you can correct it with the Word of God. So a lot of people interpret the world this way. It is through the facts. They look at the facts around them. In fact, we've been trained to have sort of a a prove-it-to-me kind of mindset. We don't believe something until it's in numbers that we can add up, or it's, it's something we can measure, or something we can see with our eyes, or touch with our hands. We just don't believe it, and that is the opposite of faith. Are you understanding that? In fact, we don't live by sight. We live by faith as God's children, which means we don't always see it, taste it, measure it, touch it. It doesn't always add up, but we believe it. And so when you live by the facts only, you're excluding the possibility of faith. And faith is where God exists. Now, uh, if you just look at the facts around you, there are often times when the facts aren't really that good. You can look at your bank account. You can get a report from the doctor. You can think about the argument you had with your spouse. Or you can think about how your grown children aren't doing what you would like for them to do. You can look at the empty uh, chairs in your church and think your ministry uh, means nothing. You can look at the facts around you. But God wants you to live your life and interpret your world by faith in the Word of God. Now, I want to read to you. Uh, something from the Word of God that I just find so powerful. And it's the story of uh, blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10. We know that Jesus is, he's walking down the road and people are just talking to him and and, uh, interacting with him. And he's interacting with people. And this guy, Bartimaeus, he's blind and he is crying out loudly, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. He wants Jesus to stop and help him. And uh, first the disciples are telling him to just, you know, be quiet. You're not one of the special ones, uh, probably, is what they're thinking. You just need to be quiet and let the the, the master, the rabbi, do what he does. Uh, But he cries all the more. And Jesus uh, says, uh, you know, bring him here. Tell Bartimaeus to come here. And so they tell him, come on, Jesus wants to talk to you. So uh, Bartimaeus, it says, he throws aside his cloak. He jumped up and he came to Jesus. And answering him, Jesus said to him, and watch this, what Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? You know why that question is so important? It's, It's like this. If Bartimaeus came up for prayer at the end of a church service, what do most ministers ask? We ask the question, what's wrong or what's going on in your life? And what we usually get is uh, the negative, what the facts are. Uh, Jesus didn't ask him what the facts were. If Jesus would have asked him what's going on or, or what problem do you have, then Bartimaeus' answer would have been simply to state the facts, which is, I'm blind, I can't see. And that's usually how we approach God. We, we tell God the facts and we think about the facts. We're interpreting our world through the facts in the natural realm. And that's what we're focused on. But Jesus doesn't give Bartimaeus a chance to tell him the facts. He doesn't say, what's your problem? He says, what do you want me to do for you? 
This forces Bartimaeus to answer with a positive attitude. He's going to answer with faith and not the facts. Did you catch that? Bartimaeus answers Jesus and and says, oh, that I could receive my sight. There's a difference between the facts, I am blind, and the faith that I could receive my sight. Are you catching that? Bartimaeus is now, because Jesus is leading him, Bartimaeus is interpreting his world through faith and not the facts. Something you can tell is rising up within Bartimaeus and he's believing that maybe the things that have been real are going to be changed. I want you to know today that Jesus healed him, it says. He says, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. If you just live by interpreting the facts around you, and you measure the bank account and your health and the doctor's report and all those things, if you just look at that and you let that tell you how your world is, then that's the world that you're going to live in. But if you look at the Word of God and you start speaking things by faith, you see, the Word says that you're provided for even when your bank account is empty. The Word says you're healed even when your body doesn't feel like it. The Word says, that's what you need to get into, is what God says in His Word. So there's, there's like these two possible roads that you could go down. One of them is the facts. And on the road of the facts, you're at the mercy of whatever is happening around you. You're going to be content, happy, blessed, joyful, depending upon how much money's in the bank or how you feel or how your relationships are going and all of those things. You're at the mercy of life. But the other road is faith in God's Word. And if you go down this road, you have the things that God says you have no matter what's happening around you. Are you catching that today? And so you need more of the Word of God in you than you do the facts in you. So which road are you going to go down? Which life are you going to live? The one you agree with. The Bible says that if two agree is touching any one thing, it shall be done. Now listen, you can agree with the report of the world. You can agree with the report of the devil. And that's the life that you will live. Or you can agree with the Word of God. And when you agree with the Word of God, it shall be done done. Are you catching that? Your world is not so bad. You know why I know that? Because the Bible says it's not so bad. Now, I don't want to discount the pain you're going through, the difficulties you're having. There are some of you out there who are facing devastating things, but you've got to understand we're talking about a man, an apostle, Paul here, who faced so many challenging difficulties and in fact was killed for the sake of Jesus Christ. I would say that if he could learn to be content in any situation, then we can too. Praise God. Don't look at the facts around you and let that tell you how your world is. Look at the Word of God and let that tell you how your world is. And when I look at the Word of God, I see things like the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hope this helped you today. Join me next time. The next video, I'm going to talk about how you can stop letting your emotions interpret your world for you. God bless you guys. Have a great day.